Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Feel Good Friday. Today I have Laura here with me, and Laura is the woman behind the Instagram My Sweat Story, and she's the founder of The Whistle App. So I'll let her tell you a little bit about that later, but first we're going to talk about um, one of our Instagram posts actually from last week. We asked you what the best relationship advice you'd ever heard was, and you guys had some amazing answers. So I'm going to share some of those answers with all of you, and then Laura is going to give us her best relationship advice. So some of the answers were honesty is key, which I love. And the other big one, which is something we're huge about at Tranquil, is communication is key. So always talk it out and never go to bed angry because it'll just fester. And if you take the time to talk it out and understand one another, you'll um, be able to resolve whatever it is you're facing. So Laura... What is your best relationship advice? I would definitely have to say live in the moment when you have the time together. Um, and I say that even because it was actually just the other day my boyfriend and I went on date night um, and I put my phone away. I'm so busy and I have emails coming in constantly. So I, you know, I took the time and I put my phone away and I was just there. And it was one of the best nights that we've had together. Um, and so, you know, taking your time away from all the distractions that happen in life and really just being in the moment for even if it's that 20 minutes that you have together, be in the moment. I love that. That's something that actually a lot of our guests say is like take whatever time you have to get away from your phone. We understand everyone's busy and we all need to like be checking our email for work purposes. Email, Instagram, everything is always on exactly. your mind. You, it's hard to get away but even taking exactly 20 minutes to just focus on being in the moment and who you're with. That's exactly. great advice. So can you tell us a little bit more about um, your history, how you ended up being an entrepreneur? Sure, so I, I wasn't born an entrepreneur, I guess you could say that. Um, it wasn't a path that I chose right from university or anything of that nature. Uh, so I went to school, uh, graduated with a business degree, um, and I ended up working in financial accounting. And I currently still have that nine to five job. Um, and it was a couple years ago that I had this sort of feeling that there was more I could be doing. Um, so I, you know, that kind of, I, I wasn't really sure what my passion was at that time, but I, I saw a need within myself and what I was experiencing through fitness. Um, and I just, my business experience and I started to kind of create a business out of it. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing at, at the beginning, but it's definitely uh, grown from there. Oh, that's great. And so being in a nine to five job and being an entrepreneur, running the Instagram account, how do you balance all of that and make sure you're taking care of your mental health at the same time? It's it's definitely new. Um, I've never had to worry about my mental health before. I you know having the nine to five structure, it's pretty easy. You turn it off when you leave work, and you know you have the rest of that that day and weekend for yourself. Um, but now it's kind of nonstop, so it's definitely something I pay more attention to in, in figuring out that balance. Um, and it's it's kind of what I mentioned in the relationship advice. It's it's dedicating that time to yourself and to other things. Um, and I'm definitely learning to do that more because I've kind of spread myself a little yeah. bit thin. But, you know, it's something that you, you learn as you go and you figure it out and you find the balance. And so do you have like a way that you make sure you don't fall into this loneliness that a lot of entrepreneurs feel that people don't understand um, how busy they are? or really understand the lifestyle? Do you schedule in time with your friends and family? Um, with friends, yes, I definitely have to schedule in time. With family, it's a little easier, even just you know, talking on the phone and stuff like that with my mom. Um, we've never really lived in the same city for a while now, so that's it's not really a problem there. Um, but I definitely find my outlet is through fitness, for sure, and just the relationships that I have in the fitness community. And you know, when you walk in the gym and your phone's down, you're, you're having a conversation. Uh, before the class and the class starts, I work out with a couple people uh, a couple times a week, and there's always that two hour sort of break that I get, uh, mm -hmm. which is really key. But it's definitely uh, learning to structure those, I guess, sort of um, friendships a little bit more. Um, you know, it, it's it's difficult because I do have a lot of friends that are new moms right now, so they're busy, I'm busy. Yeah. Um, so finding that time to keep those friendships strong and, and remain connected with them is difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, we do try and do things like group dinners once a month, things like that. So finding those, those breaks in your schedule and, and putting in the dinners and, and the group, group connection is important. Yeah, that's great. It's all about kind of finding what your priorities are and who your priorities are and making sure you take care of that. And so I know you mentioned that fitness is not just, 
you know, a passion of yours, it's also a social thing for you. It's a way you maintain your friendships. Aside from that, how do you think physical health and like mental health relate and why it's so important to be physically active? So I think they they are definitely connected. You know, obviously fitness releases endorphins when you work out and that's the, the, the happy medicine that your body gives yourself. Um, and so the, it's just that sort of science side behind it, which is really great. And then just the connection in the community that you get in the fitness scene, especially here in Toronto that I've come to discover, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, and then, you know, there's also just the, the release and stress relief that it can provide for yourself internally. Like I know myself, I started running recently and I find that running downtown by the waterfront is one of the most calming mental releases that I have. And it's, even if it's just 30 minutes a day, like I finish my run and I'm just relieved. So, you know, there's, there's definitely the benefit of, of mental release and mental, mental health through fitness. Yeah. So it's definitely a self care activity for yourself. What else do you tend to do for self care? Um, I, honestly, when I get the chance to just kind of veg out and watch something on Netflix, that's that's where I go. Um, trying to even fit in maybe a nail appointment with my sister <laughs> or a, a lunch date or dinner date, and you know, just really kind of relax. That's that's important to me. And so you're probably up there in some of the busiest people and you still manage to fit in your workouts. What are some tips you have for people who are really busy in maintaining their physical? Yeah, so definitely it can be a challenge. Um, and I, I find for some reason we always put the workout at the bottom of our list and it's the one thing that we're willing to cut out first. So you need to kind of wipe that from your mentality. Um, and I, what I used to do to get myself, I guess, hooked on fitness, sort of, if you will, um, was I scheduled it like an appointment in my calendar, you know, it's almost like a dentist appointment or something that you can't miss, like a weekly meeting. Um, and so I would put it in during my lunch hour and I didn't do any meetings for any of my entrepreneurial stuff during lunch. I focused all those after work. So I had no excuse to be too tired or not have enough time or whatever it may be. And I would go work out during lunch. I would meal prep my food and everything so that that didn't get in the way either. And I limit my excuses and structure a time schedule. Yeah. So it's really organization is yeah. key in that sense. Definitely. And so tell us a little bit about Whistle app. I'm so curious. Yeah. So Whistle is a social fitness app that connects people looking for a workout partner. Um, so the idea behind it is sort of a Tinder for finding a workout buddy. Um, so you set your preferences and your activity, and then you can match with people in your area that are also looking for that same sort of uh, running partner or yoga buddy. And so it can be anything from uh, people who want to do classes together to just like running on the street. Definitely. Right now we just have five activities uh, listed on the app. Um, and then you can match with people. You can put in the gym that you, you go to or if you have class pass. Uh, things like that. So then you can match with other people that maybe are interested in going to a spin spin studio, things like that. That's great. And it's such a good way to keep motivated because you're kind of, you don't want to ditch the person. Definitely. It's definitely um, there for accountability. Like I know the two girls that I matched with, um, it was closer to Christmas time. I worked out with them all through the winter and I still have a connection with both of them now. And they're actually now becoming sort of like more friends than anything else. So it was, you know, at the beginning, it was just a source of motivation and accountability through one another. And now it's actually transpiring into something more. So it's really cool. That's so nice. It's, it's better than some of the other advice I've heard because um, I'm one of those people that ha- has trouble staying motivated yeah. when working out. Someone told me, switch running shoes with a workout buddy. And so you have their running shoes. So you are <laughs> obligated to show up because if you miss your workout, they, they miss will theirs. miss theirs. That's interesting. I've never heard that. Yeah. So this is definitely yeah. a less <laughs> stressful way of doing it yeah. and a lot more social because you can meet a bunch of different exactly. people. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it's crazy where friendships can build from and, you know, having a common goal or a common interest is what kind of really connects people together. Um, so that's kind of the, the key there and, and keeping contact too. So. That's great. And so thank you so much for joining us. And if you want more tips, make sure you follow Laura on Instagram. She's at my sweat story. So make sure you check out her Instagram. It has tons of great content. And follow Tranquil's Instagram if you like the relationship tips. We have tons of content every week, tips and tricks on keeping yourself mentally and physically healthy. Have a great long weekend. And remember, we all face challenges in our life. It's how we cope and how we react to them that defines our experience. So go out, take care of yourself, and enjoy this long weekend. Bye, guys.